New orders just in, Jensen. Copy that. Thanks for the lift. No problem. Hey, and, uh, Jensen. I just wanted to say, new look suits you. Like, you haven't missed a beat at all. Thanks. So, how's it feel? Being augmented. Excuse me? Don't take it the wrong way. I mean, I've got a few neuro enhancements myself. Discreet ones to help me fly better. But I chose to get them implanted. You didn't. Now that you had a chance to try them out, what do you think? You're right. I didn't choose to get augmented. And I still don't know if I would have if given the choice. But today felt good. Surprisingly good. Dr. Reed said you'd take to them. Said it was in your genes. Just be careful, okay? A lot of people think there's a reason the human body rejects this technology over time. I didn't peg you for the type who gets caught up in metaphysical debates, Malik. I'm not. I told you myself, I've got neuro enhancements. I'm just saying the choices we do get to make inevitably have consequences. Yeah. Tell that to the bastard who did this to me. I hear you. And you know what? You're not the only person in this place who wants to find him. So if I can help in any way, all you gotta do is ask. Actually, there is something. I want to know about the first attack. Fine. Ask away. You were there that night. What do you remember about it? That it was chaos. First, everybody figured there'd been some kind of accident, but Pritchard couldn't get a good visual and communications were haywire. Then we heard the explosions. By the time anyone knew what had hit us... They were gone. Whoever they were, they were good, Jensen. Special training good. Did anyone else see them? The men who attacked? Not well enough to get a description. Pritchard got some fuzzy images off one of the IntelliCams, but his tapes were all confiscated by Homeland Security. Homeland? I heard Homicide passed it over to Special Investigations. Detroit Special Investigations. They did. For the first month. After that... All I really know is, the case is still pending. And Mr. Seraph is not pleased. I've been thinking about why they attacked. What they were really after. Isn't it obvious? They didn't want us going to Washington. No, that was just timing. Hearings can be rescheduled. Somebody else can present Megan's findings. I don't think so, Jensen. They took out her whole team. Declan Faraday, Vasily Sevchenko, Nia Colvin, even Eric Koss. The labs their bodies were found in. Were burned to a crisp. I know. The only reason you weren't caught in the fire was because that retaining wall came down. Saved your life, believe it or not. So the whole attack was just to destroy Megan's research. Sure looks that way. Mr. Seraph is hoping to reconstruct it, but it may take months. If he can keep us solvent that long. I'm gonna find a Malik. One way or another. I believe you. And just so you know, when you do, I've got your back. I appreciate that, Malik, but right now... You've got to get the Typhoon into the tech lab. Right. See you later, then. Oh, and Jensen, the boss wants a face-to-face -face debrief in his office once it's secure. Roger that. Good night, Malik. Jensen, you were there. What happened? How did that monster get away from you? I mean, I'm sure you did everything you could, but what if he does it again? What if he attacks us here? Someone tell me how the purists were even able to break well, into the plan. He was with purity first. This whole thing just brings back just bad memories. I love them. Wow. Well, it's saying you did a great job at the plan. Apparently, there wasn't much bloodshed thanks to you. Well, if it isn't Mahatma Gandhi himself, come to honor us all with his life-preserving presence. If this is about the Typhoon, I'll get to it in a minute. Now, Pritchard. I didn't risk my neck to have you lose it in a pile of CPUs and SCSI adapters. Well, look at you, using the big words. Don't think just because you hacked through the plant security system so fast that you're an expert on everything computer. There's a reason I can't examine the Typhoon yet. Do tell. For your information, I am running a diagnostic sweep on our network and router security to find out how Sanders Hacker got a hold of our codes. I'd have thought the first question to ask is, whose codes were they? Unless you already know. Stick to kicking down doors and shooting people, Jetson, and stop trying to do my job. I guarantee you will get along better that way. Mr. Jensen! Oh, everyone's talking about what a great job you did saving the hostages. You're a real hero, sir. Can I... can I help you find something? I need to get to Seraph's office. Then you want to go to the penthouse. Use the elevator at the left wing of the building to get there.
about the situation, but sources tell me that a militant group of pro-human activists have raided a Seraph Industries plant. Factory workers have been taken hostage, and the entire city holds its collective breath. I doubt I need to remind you folks that this is the second time the biotechnology firm has been attacked. The first time, six months ago, on the eve of controversial hearings set to scrutinize the company's research. With those hearings permanently on hold, many are now wondering if something else may be going on. Is David Seraph hiding something? For tonight, this is Eliza Kassan reporting to you live from Picus. I'm telling you, Hugh, he might not have put the gun in Sanders' hand, but it was Taggart's speech to the UN that started all this. William Taggart is nothing if not a shrewd political operator. You know that, David. So for the sake of appearances, I have to look him in the eye and let him bullshit me? With a smile. Always with a smile. We'll talk later. Yeah, you wanted to see me? Yeah, how are you feeling? I've had better days. Well, when we're done here, check him with Dr. Markovic at the Lim Clinic downtown. Get her to get a checkup. If you insist. Listen, about Sanders? Yeah, about Sanders. What the hell were you thinking? Letting him slip away like that? I sent you in there to take care of things. I'm hoping it'll pay off for us later. Sanders was furious when he found out his hacker was augmented. He's not gonna rest till he finds out who set him up. Oh. And you're naive enough to think he'll share the information when he gets it. I thought you were ready for this, Adam. I am. Today's attack was just a shell game being run by somebody else. I intend to find out who and why, so that it never happens to anybody again. Good, because so do I. That hacker in Sanders' group, you're sure he was augmented? I pulled his cables out myself. Yeah, well, the police are saying he's not, and they're refusing to let me see the body, no matter how much money I threaten to pull from their retirement fund. Maybe someone else is offering more. So what do you want me to do, boss? We have to get a look at the corpse. You still got friends in the force? You think, uh... You think one of them will let you into the morgue? Depends who I run into. Get over to the station and find a way inside. Because if that hacker was augmented, his neural hub might tell us who he was. Contact me when you've gotten a hold of it. Boss, what you're asking me to do, it's not exactly legal. No, it isn't. You got a problem with that? As a matter of fact, I do. Look, Adam. You know the police never fully investigated that first attack, don't you? Yes, but... But nothing. We lost a lot of good people, top people. And I'm beginning to think Detroit PD doesn't give a damn. Someone is pulling strings to keep us in the dark. And in your world, the ends justify the means. My world is your world, Adam. And if getting that neural hub illegally will show us who's behind these attacks, and maybe even help us go after them, yeah, you're damn right it does. So get going. Adam, were you just speaking to David? I didn't know he'd finished his call. Is everything okay? As well as can be expected. Right, like I know what that means anymore. The phone's been ringing off the hook ever since Bill Taggart's little press conference this evening. Taggart? Seraph was speaking about him when I walked in. What's the founder of the Humanity Front saying about us now? Oh, he's all sincere this time. Denouncing all the violence that's been committed against us, offering to come here in person to express his deepest sympathies. Right. No wonder the boss seems grumpy. Can you blame him? If it were up to Luddites like Taggart, we would have died on that operating table. The problem is, he knows how to play on people's fears. Tampering with human biology can be pretty scary. Tell that to all the war ants whose lives have been improved because of it. But if Taggart has his way, if he can sway popular opinion enough, then the United Nations will be forced to take a stand. Mark my words. That man is trouble. Hey, 
Hey, Jensen. Man, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're back. How are you holding up? I manage. I'm sorry about Megan. I know it must be hard. For a while, we thought you were a goner, too. Everything's going to shit. The attack on HQ, and now this mess with the factory. Yeah, tough times all around. How about you, Corella? You okay? I don't know. I... Uh, I fucked up. I mean bad. What happened? Well, a couple of months ago, me and Tyndall, you know, one of Pritchard's techs, we started sneaking out some neuropocene from one of the labs. Jesus, Tim. You realize this could get you fired, worse, arrested, if the company chooses to prosecute. What were you thinking? I know. It's just... it's complicated. I didn't want to do it at first, but there were good reasons. Anyway, now I want out, but Tyndall has security footage of me stealing the stuff and says he'll expose me if I ever stop helping him. I'm in a bad spot, Adam. I need that footage back. I know you're busy with everything that's going on right now, but I could really use your help. All right. Tell me more. Really? Wow. Thanks, Adam. I thought I was done for. The security footage will probably be on his apartment computer. Meet me in front of the subway station parking lot once you get a hold of it. I got it from here. Mrs. Reed? Oh, Adam, I'm sorry you startled me. And please, call me Cassandra. You and Megan were together long enough. I was waiting for you. Out here? Why not come meet me inside? I don't know. I guess I'm just not ready. This is where you work, but to me, this is also the place where I lost my daughter. I guess I never thought of it that way. I'm sorry. It's not proper of me to come here and stir up bad memories, especially after what you've been through. Yeah. A lot of things changed six months ago. I can't get over how much they've changed you. At first, I couldn't even believe you were still alive. How do you handle all of this? I do what I have to do, augmented or not. You seem very pragmatic, Adam. Maybe you should be careful not to trivialize such traumatic changes. Can I ask why you wanted to see me? Yes, of course. I'm sorry. I'm here about Megan. About what happened to her. Or rather, about the investigation into what happened. What about it? Well, simply put, I feel something is not quite right with the way the case was handled. You think there was some foul play involved? I do. Call it mother's intuition but when speaking to some of the investigators there were a lot of inconsistencies and then I met this detective a man called Chase he agreed things weren't handled by the book although he has no proof and now you want to find out more I'll never hear my daughter laugh again Adam I'll never get a call from her to ask how I've been or have the chance to ask her about her day she was stolen from me However unjustified this all is, I still want to know why it happened. You're not the same, Adam. And we've yet to see if it's for better or worse. But I know you loved Megan. Please, will you help me find out what really happened to her? I never got a chance to investigate the attack myself. I'll look into it. Thank you. He works part-time as a security guard in an apartment building on Brooklyn Court. I'll be waiting for you in your apartment lobby once you're done. Why does a detective need to work part-time as a security guard? Oh, he retired soon after the case. I don't really know the details. Maybe he'll tell you more. I'm on it. Well, shit! If it ain't the captain himself! Mr. Zarif done fixed you up good, ain't he? Give you a new set of glasses and everything. Damn. How you doing, Letitia? Didn't think I'd see you walking this boulevard anytime soon. That's for sure. Not after what happened six months ago. People said you was down for the count. People tend to underestimate me. <laughs> you and me both, Captain. You and me both. Uh, you, uh... Got any credit you can spare? 
I wish I could offer you a drink, Dish. But I know you only like Hop Devil. Oh, that's all right, Cap. It's the thought that counts. I think I've got all the information I need right now, Dish. Maybe next time. I'll be right here waiting for you, Cap. Hello there. Well, you must be Adam Jensen. A keen observation. Mrs. Reed told me you might pay me a visit. And don't take this the wrong way, but you're kind of hard to miss. I'll try to take that as a compliment. She told me you might have information regarding Megan Reed's case and the attack on Seraph headquarters. Oh boy, what a mess. Total pissing match. We had the feds on our ass, orders from three different departments, and pressure from so many lobbyists it felt like being the scrawny new kid in a prison shower. It is a very high-profile case. Mrs. Reed said you thought some procedures were overlooked. You got that right. I mean, you know how it is. Mrs. Reed told me you used to be a cop. There's always cases where you see the lazy officers taking shortcuts. But this... this was different. Different how? Too much stuff got overlooked. People seemed way too eager to jump to conclusions, and every time I was remotely insistent, I got turned down by ranking officers. People wanted to bury this thing fast. That's never a good sign. Surely you have something more substantial than this. Yeah, well, that's where you come in. I got a couple of leads I could never fully investigate. I started poking around, but these government-type agents just gave me the creeps. So I got scared. Months away from retirement, I didn't want to fuck things up. But you? You obviously have the means to get to the bottom of this. So what have you got? First off, there's a rumor that the order to close the investigation came from higher up. Maybe even outside the local department. Anything like that would have passed through Captain Penn. There might be traces of this left on his office computer. Guess I'll have to pay a visit to the local precinct. Well, well, while you're there. There was an officer assigned to the case, Chet Wagner. He's not what you call a choir boy. And when he suddenly got brought on the case, I got suspicious. Somebody wanted him there. And I'm pretty sure he tampered with some of the evidence. You should talk to him. Find out what he knows. Okay, I'll have a little chat with Officer Wagner. You'll most likely find him in the lobby. He got retrograded from his conduct, and he takes depositions now. He won't budge easily, but I'm pretty sure you can find some dirt on him on his desktop. His office is on the third floor. He might find something there to help loosen up his tongue. Anything else worth looking into? Yeah, when the order came down to close the case, the bulk of the evidence was stashed in the storage locker. Maybe you can find some interesting stuff in there. It's on the alley right next to the station. The code is 40... 4891. But I know an outside agency had access to that locker, so be careful. Thanks for the heads up. Ah, it's, it's nothing. And, uh, oh, uh, please, don't bother coming back here with details. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad to help. But the less I know about this case, the better I'll feel. Something about a man who's augmented. <laughs> Jensen. My god, it's been a while. Remember me? We used to work the old 17th precinct back in the day. Man, 
I wish I could go with the good old you haven't changed at all bit, but that'd be complete and utter bullshit, right? Yeah, I guess that's one way to put it. You look a little different too, Xander. What's your new gig? Deep cover. I'm keeping tabs on the derelict rowballers for now. I've got a hunch something big's coming. Why do I get the sudden feeling you're about to include me into that something big? Because you're clever. That and the fact that, well, it's pretty obvious. But jokes aside, you couldn't have come at a better time, Jensen. This case I'm on, we're stalling and we could use a little external help. Go ahead. I'm with IA now, and we're working a sting on a dirty cop named Jack O'Malley. Elusive, motherfucker. I mean, men in black elusive. We know he's involved in drugs, weapon dealing, tied into the gangs. But he's clever, and we just can't seem to pin anything on him. I swear he's got friends in high places. Okay, and where do I fit in all this? You're an outsider. You can go places we legally can't. I need someone to do a couple of things. Break into his apartment, sneak into DRB territory, and finally, go undercover posing as a hitman. This guy is nothing minor, Jensen. He's the real deal. Major player, major consequences. We have to get him before shit hits a fan. You in? Can't let a guy like that roam free. I'm in. All right then, let's get to work. Like I said, I've got a couple of very promising leads, but O'Malley's got friends among the powers that be. I wouldn't be able to get my hands on a warrant even if I had footage of the perp confessing in real time as he's finger painting his motive on the wall in the victim's blood. So I guess we're gonna have to break a few rules. Okay. But we have to be careful how we handle this. It could discredit your investigation. True, but thing is, Jensen, it's either this or there simply won't be an investigation. You know me, I usually play by the book. Only this time, the bad guy's a friend of the publisher. What about the undercover assignment, posing as a hitman? O'Malley's crafty, and even a bit paranoid. He's always using proxies, scapegoats, and red herrings to get us off his ass. But after months of schmoozing, we finally got through to one of his guys. Turned him into a mole. He provides us with information, stuff like that. And he's gonna be my way in? Exactly. Yesterday, another one of O'Malley's guys whacked someone. A drug dealer. There's a witness, but we don't have any details. O'Malley does, and he wants someone to take care of the mess. The usual guy just got busted for possession, so the contact will send you in to pose as his replacement. O'Malley will be waiting for you in an alley next to the police station. And you want me to milk him to get the info on the witness? You haven't lost your touch, Jensen. We think O'Malley will ask you to retrieve the murder weapon, use it to kill the witness, and then plant it on a scapegoat he can arrest later. What you need to do is get that weapon and bring it to me. And what about the witness? We're almost positive he's a member of the MCBs. Once you know the location, you'll need to get there, take care of any opposition, and prep him for retrieval. Prep him? Well, you know, he's a gangbanger, Jensen. He's not going to turn in peacefully, but we need him alive. So I guess you're going to have to play this one macho and knock him out. One of our guys will then just happen to stumble upon him. You know, serendipity. Okay. What's this about getting into DRB territory? Yeah, I needed to get in there and track down a shipment of weapons for me. We managed to gain access to solid information that will tie it to O'Malley, but I need proof it's really there. They've probably stashed it around somewhere. A cop dealing weapons to a criminal anti-Og gang? Not a pretty picture. Got that right. I guess we both agree. Nothing good can come out of this, huh? I don't know where exactly the DRB's cash is, but I know there's a bonus for you if you manage to sneak in and out without being spotted. Would make shit easier to handle on my side. So what am I looking for in O'Malley's apartment? Information, drugs, weapons. Basically anything you think can be used to build a stronger case against him. The more you get, the better. Okay, let's do this. You can contact me on my info link if anything comes up. Excellent. Oh, and Jensen, one last thing. To protect my cover, it'd be better if you only contact me again once you've taken care of everything. Adam? You got that neural hub yet? You're asking me to pull off a heist, boss, inside a police station. It's gonna take time. Right. Well, if you can't talk your way past the lobby, there's gotta be another entrance outside, in back or on the roof. Save the frontal assault as a last resort.
thanks to the arrival of William Taggart, celebrity author and founder of the anti-augmentation organization, Humanity Front. Speaking from the tarmac at Wayne County Airport, Taggart called the attacks... An extremely regrettable affair. I'd very much like to meet with David Seraph in person, offer my deepest sympathies, and assure him that these attacks are in no way linked to Humanity Front. My people have worked tirelessly to find a peaceful solution to this dispute, and I unequivocally deplore the methods used by these hostage takers. Now, that being said, I do hope the UN takes a concentrated look at what happened here tonight. Mr. Taggart went on to express a sincere desire to stand in front of the General Assembly with David Sarah, united in their cause to find a common ground. Should that day ever come to pass, one cannot help but wonder if millionaire Hugh Darrow, the man whose innovations first propelled augmentation technology to the forefront, is also denied. What are you doing? I think you know why I'm here, Tyndall. I want Corella's security footage back. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm Seraph Industries' chief of security. I'm pretty sure I can find out about an edited security tape, so don't bullshit me. Ah, oh, shit. Listen, Jensen, I never wanted things to get this bad. I'm not a bad guy. I feel for Corella, I really do. But sometimes, for a good cause, you have to get your hands dirty. Oh. There's a good cause now? Oh, I see. You think I'm selling the stuff, right? I understand why this would seem like an obvious motive, especially to an ex-cop. But trust me, you shouldn't always take things at face value. I'm not selling the neuropazine. I'm giving it away. Giving it away? To who? To the people who need it. You think everyone gets augmented by choice? No. Shit happens. And then what? You're saddled with neuropazine injections for the rest of your life, and that shit costs money. But what choice do you have? Without the drug, you'll die. Rejection syndrome, crippling pain, that just ain't right. So I did the only decent thing to do. I stepped up. I can respect that. But blackmail is still blackmail. Corella wants out, and I'm here to make sure he gets out. Man, this whole thing is becoming way too much trouble. I've even got two local pushers on my back because they say my philanthropic actions are undercutting their profit. That's not your only problem. A gun-toting client was waiting for you in your apartment earlier. Really? In my apartment? Shit, the dealers probably sent him. Tell you what, I'll deal with the client later. You take care of the dealers, and the footage is yours. You're better than this, Tyndall. You know Corella doesn't deserve this. You have to do the right thing. You're right. This isn't fair to Corella, but I'm doing what I have to do. I am doing the right thing. Look, I told you, if you want me to give you that security footage, you're going to have to get those pushers off my ass first. Okay, I'll help you out, but you better not be playing me. You give me way too much credit, Jensen. I'm a security tech, not a hardened mobster. The two pushers go by the name PG and PK. They hang out in the alley near the basketball court. Just make sure they never bother me again. You're asking me to kill them. Well, that's a bit drastic, isn't it? But it's your call, as long as you leave me alone. The important thing is you need to take care of both of them. I've taken care of the dealers. Now hand over the footage. Thanks, Jensen. Listen. I know it's not something you did from the bottom of your heart, but still, you saved my ass. Here's your footage. Listen, Tyndall, I know you're trying to do the right thing. But we have to do things by the book, or we'll just have chaos. I'll put you in contact with someone inside Seraph Industries. 
they may be able to get you neuropathy for those who need it. Seriously? You'd really do that? Wow. I never would have expected this from you, Jensen. I really appreciate this. Tell Corella I'm sorry. that it might be the other way around. Were you followed? Nervous, are we? Surely you understand I wasn't successful in this line of work for this long by being careless. So what is it you need? Straight to business, a rare quality these days. Tell me, are you familiar with local gangs? More than enough to get by. Perfect. Now I warn you this is not the cleanest of work, but your efforts will be well compensated. An associate of mine will leave a package for you in an alley on Grand River Road. You will retrieve this package and then use it to deal with a problem of mine. Permanently. Who's the target? Someone who won't be missed, I assure you. A ganger that goes by the name Double T. Hangs around in an apartment near Earl's Court. It's not likely that he'll be alone. Just as it's not likely that people keeping him company will be of the pleasant sort. You can't miss him. He's got prominent and rather tasteless augmentations to his face and arms. You're telling me you went through all this trouble to hire me just so I can eliminate a banger? That would be a tad overkill, I admit. No, uh, eliminating the target with the weapon provided to you is only the first part of your assignment. Once you've dealt with Double T, I need you to sneak into derelict row and plant the murder weapon among the baller's weapon staff. Unnoticed. Kill a member of the Motor City Bangers, then plant the murder weapon in the rival gang's weapon stash. You're trying to start a war. Hopefully. You obviously want this done quick and done well. I respect that. All I'm asking for is half the payment in advance as a gesture of goodwill. In my line of work, you simply can't afford to be careless. You've got guts, I'll give you that. You've got yourself a deal. 